Good morning, IED. Congratulations on completing the cube project. Now, we're moving on. We know how to make cubes. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and start adding some detail and start getting used to some of the sketch functionality of Autodesk Inventor. And the best way of doing this is to create the following. The one, the only, Rosie. Dun, 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 dun. From the 1990s cartoon, The Jetsons. For this project, not only are you going to be creating different types of cubes, but you're also going to be putting details on those cubes. And you're also going to be giving this Rosie functionality that we did not even do last year. What I mean by that is, this Rosie, once you're completed it, is going to have the capability of turning its head left and right, moving its arms up and down, and moving its legs side to side. So it's going to be an animated rosy structure. And it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm excited to get started, so let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead, open up Autodesk Inventor, go to New, or iPro New, whichever you like, and open up a standard part file. Every time we create something new, we always have to start at a part and then work our way to the assembly and then finally to the presentation. We're going to create a 2D sketch and I'm going to select that plane, although it doesn't quite matter which plane you choose. And we have to decide what we want to build first. The head, the body, the arms, or the legs. And I think the head is a good good way to start out this project and then we will build the rest based off of the dimensions of the head. So, one of the things you're graded on in this project is the relative accuracy to the 2D rosy structure over here. So you don't want to just make outrageously wrong shapes. You want to try to stay true to this rosy as much as you can without using a ruler, without measuring. Although if you do need to use a ruler, you're more than welcome to. So I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle for her head. And looking at it, I would say it's probably around 2.25 inches. And I did that by selecting dimensions and then dimensioning that to maybe 1.5 inches. Yeah, that looks okay. And that's fine for now, so I'm going to finish that sketch. I'm going to extrude it out. And let's extrude it out, uh, let's say 1.65 inches. So that looks pretty good compared to this. So I'm going to say that's fine. And we've created the basic structure for Rosie's head. So let's go ahead and add some details now. So first off we have to decide what's going to be the front of her head. And I say this is fine, although on the cube it says it's the back. So I'm actually going to spin this around to here where it says front and we'll say that is what we're going to create a sketch on. So go to Start 2D Sketch and now instead of selecting a plane we're going to select the face to sketch on. And let's go draw the eyes first. So she has two eyes. So I'm going to draw out two eyes. And you can dimension in two ways. One, while before you click it down, you could type in the dimension. So I could type in 0.5 inches, enter, or you could draw out the circle first and then go to the dimension tool and just dimension it by clicking on the outer part of the circle and then saying 0.5 inches. Either way, make sure that the 0.5 is not inside the object because that would be violating a dimension rule and it's instead outside the object. Now, we also have to make sure that the eyes are accurately portrayed, so they have to be symmetrical on each side. So let's dimension the eye 
to each of the sides, the top to the center, and then the side to the center. So I clicked on dimension. I'm going to click on the top of the head and then the center of the eyeball. And I'm going to move the dimension I created outside the shape. And let's say 0.425 is actually fine. So 0.425 inches. And I'm going to dimension now the center to this. Oop, I mean the side to the center. And let's say 0.425 inches for this as well. Do the same with the other side. And now the eyes are perfectly symmetrical with one another. So we're done with this, this sketch. Go ahead, finish the sketch. And let's extrude this. Extrude. And we can extrude out both these eyeballs. Right now, that is flying off the page, and that's probably too much of an extrusion. So let's change that to maybe 0.04 inches. And that looks really good. You know, you want a slight extrusion, but not too much. I'm going to say OK for that. And Rosie's eyes are red. So let's go ahead and color these eyes red right now. Go to your tools, adjust, and change the colors of the eyes to red. And then OK with that. And that's also going to help us see it better, because now what we have to do is we have to add the the eyeliner stuff and Rosie's mouth. So on the front, let's go ahead and create a new 2D sketch. And draw the eyeliner for Rosie's eyeball. Now, some rules about extrusion before we do this. One, you can extrude out shapes. And it's very easy to do so. However, you cannot extrude out lines because there is no depth to a line and you cannot extrude out a series of lines like this. It has to be a closed shape to extrude. So you can extrude these two, but this you cannot extrude. However, if you closed it off, you can extrude it. So now this is extrudable. Second rule, and yes, we'll just say second rule. You cannot extrude out shapes that overlap with one another. So if you had a shape and another shape on top of that shape, they cannot be extruded. I know a lot of you will come up to me and say, yes, they can, but we're going to pretend that they cannot, and it's going to prevent problems later on. So don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Things like that will cause problems later on. So we're going to avoid it. If you want to create something like Rosie's eyeliner, the two outer black cir or the outer black circle, what you're going to do is you're going to create a small circle and then a circle that is slightly larger in diameter. And when we go to extrude this, we're going to click on this area and it's going to extrude the outer ring. Since we started a new sketch for this project or for this eyeliner part, none of the sketches that we created before exist in this in this sketch. So you can't assume that this circle we made exists now because it doesn't. If I click on the F7 key so click on F7 on your keyboard. It slices and shows you what is available in terms of sketches. And only what we've created since I started talking about this exists. Not the eyes. They don't exist just yet. So let's go ahead and draw out her eyeliner. So I'm going to find the center of the circle, which might be a little tricky to do. But it won't be because we dimensioned it, actually. So I'm just going to click F7 and draw in her eye. 
And if you recall, we said the I was, I believe, 0.5 inches. Whoops. And then it was 0.425 from each side. And let's go ahead and delete all this stuff. So I'm just going to select it all, delete it. That was just for an example. And now let's make a slightly larger circle. And let's say this one is going to be 0 0.575. Okay, that looks fine. However, we also want to represent that little dimple up there. So I'm going to go to the circle tool and I'm going to draw a circle over here. And let's say that circle is 0 0.07. And that looks fine, except it's breaking that rule where I said you can't have a shape overlapping on another shape. So in order to go around that rule, what we have to do is go over here to where it says trim, select the trim tool, and then we can trim off. So I'm going to trim this off, and I'm going to trim this off. And now if you think about it, this is only one shape going around this ring. So I'm going to quickly create the other eye. we said this was 0.575, the tiny circle on the top of 0 0.7, 0 .0, was it 0.07, yeah. And then we're going to trim it off, trim, trim this, trim that, okay. So we have two eyeballs, I'm going to press F7 on the keyboard and it looks like they match up perfectly. So let's go ahead and finish that sketch. And we're going to extrude now the eyelashes. So I'm going to click on that one, and I'm going to click on that one. But do not click accept just right now. What we're going to do is we're going to add 0.01 to that 0.04. So it's 0 0.0401. And I'm going to go ahead and explain that in my next video. So I'm going to hit OK.